Oracle Linux installation. Why are we installing Oracle Linux and not Fedora as discussed in our book? Stability of the code base and availability of updates is the main reason. Common enterprise Linux distributions provide support for many years. Oracle Linux is supported through 2029. Some common enterprise distributions you will hear in our region are Red Hat, Ubuntu, and SUS. You will also hear Kali for cybersecurity and pen testing. Non-enterprise Linux distributions, which there are hundreds of, you will hear Fedora, which is bleeding edge, meaning that they're constantly trying new software and it is constantly changing. Support also ends quickly, normally within one year to one and a half years. CentOS, slightly more stable than Fedora. They are all supported by Red Hat. We have another OpenSUSE. The problem with the non-enterprise is the time it takes to write a book and develop a curriculum is normally at the end of the support cycle. Then trying to do labs, the servers that house the software are no longer available. Then if we and try to use a newer version, uh, the graphics and stuff will not meet the labs. And for entry level students as yourselves, it can cause some learning issues. So that is the main reason we're going to install Oracle Linux. It is a direct clone of Red Hat Enterprise. So if you remember from chapter one, reading page 19 in the book about the license, the GPL, any software that you create and put into the GPL, you must release for free. So other companies are able to take the source code, compile, and build out their own distribution, very similar to yours. Ways to install Linux. Download an ISO image this is just a file of a DVD or CD. You can attach it to a virtual machine and install just as you would have a physical media. Rufus is a piece of software that can take an ISO image and place it on flash media, such as a thumb drive or SD card. You can then boot up off of the SD card or thumb drive and install an operating system. And this is very common as many of the installations are now over five gigabytes in size and are difficult to fit onto a DVD. Other options, physical DVD or CD, and these are not so common anymore. Most IT personnel are going to be using the ISO image installing into virtual machines or carrying around a thumb drive with installation. Another common item, if your company is using cloud-based software, you will deploy out Linux, Windows machines with images or templates that the cloud hosting provider has already created. It is basically a pre-installed operating system that you deploy out and they customize the name after it's deployed. Now let's deploy Oracle Linux in Hyper-V. In your Canvas shell, I hope you have already clicked on week two or week one and downloaded the ISO image for Oracle Linux. 
It's under Resources, the second bullet, Oracle Linux Download. Once the download is complete, launch your project 2-1. This lab covers the installation of Oracle Linux. Download the PDF. And follow along with this video. You may print this out, arrange it on one side of your monitor or the other, or if you have a dual monitor, put the instructions on the other screen. Now we will start Hyper-V. Search for your Hyper-V manager as set up in one of the previous videos. Make sure your PC name is highlighted on the left side. On the right side, click New Virtual Machine. Click Next. Give the virtual machine a name. Click Next. Specify Generation 2. Click Next. The amount of memory, 4096. That is equal to 4 gigabytes of RAM. Click Next. Select your bridged connection. Click Next. The hard disk size, the default is 127. You'll want to highlight that and change it to 50. Click Next. For installation, click the second radio button and browse to where you downloaded the Oracle Linux ISO image. Likely, it is in your Downloads folder. Once you locate the Oracle Linux R8 image, highlight it and click Open. Click Next. Verify the summary looks similar to mine. Your operating system image and hard disk location may be in a different location. I want my hard disk to be in a different location, so I'm going to jump back a step. You can skip that step unless you want yours in a different location. Now I'll click Finish. A few things need to be changed before we start the installation. Right click on your virtual machine, go to Settings. Because this is not a Microsoft virtual machine, Secure Boot must be disabled. Select Secure Boot Enabled. On the right side, uncheck Enable Secure Boot. Click on Memory. Since we enabled Dynamic Memory, we don't want to go over 4096, so I'm going to modify the maximum RAM to 4096. I'll then click OK.
Now with those settings changed, the installation will proceed. Right click Oracle Linux and click connect. Click start. If you get a white screen with an error, you likely skipped the settings change for disabling secure boot. Here we are on a countdown. If this is the first time that you're using the downloaded ISO image, it's best to use the default option and test this media and install Oracle Linux. If you're doing this lab several times for practice, you can skip this step by hitting the up arrow key and going straight to install Oracle Linux 8.4. Once you make the selection, you must hit enter. You'll see lots of text scroll across the screen while the graphical installer loads. You will come to the welcome screen. English should be default selected. Click continue. On the installation summary screen, we'll have several items here to change. Let's start with time and date. Adjust time and date to your time zone. You can click on the region or you can use the drop down and select Chicago and Americas as the country and city. Adjust the AM PM at the bottom left. Click Done. Back on the installation summary page, we'll now select installation destination. On this page, click the custom radio button at the bottom. Click Done. Select the drop down on LVM and change it to standard partition. Click the hyperlink. Click here to create them automatically. Highlight the forward slash or root partition. Change the desired capacity. The 35. Leave the GIB. The label field. Type in root in all uppercase. Once those two changes are made, click the Update Settings button. Click Done. On the summary page, click Accept Changes. Next, click on Software Selection. Ensure Server with a GUI is selected. On the right, Select Guest Agents. Click Done when you make that selection.
Next, we will set the network and host name. Move the slider from off to on. Click done. Now we will set the administrator password, also known as root user account in Linux. Here we will use a simple password for lab purposes, capital P, then lowercase a s s and the numbers one two three four you will have to tab and retype it once the passwords match we have to click the done button if you notice at the bottom the yellow bar says we have to press done a second time to confirm we want to use such a weak password click done We'll now create a user account in the full name, type out sample user1 and spell out the word 1. The username, make sure you type it all lowercase, type user and place a number 1 at the end. Do not have spaces in a username. The password fields, all lowercase, and the word secret. This is another unsecure password, so we must click done twice to confirm we want to use an unsecure password. All settings are set in the installation summary page for the labs that we are going to complete later. Now you may click begin installation. Here you may have to wait 30 minutes or more for the installation to complete. So you can monitor the progress bar and I'll use the movie magic to skip to the end. Once the progress bar gets to the end, you'll have a reboot system. Click the reboot system button, lower right hand corner. While the system is rebooting, move your mouse up to Media, DVD Drive, and verify that the eject is gray. The system will reboot and ask you to accept the license agreement. Click license information, place a checkbox, I accept the license agreement. Click done at the top of the screen. Click finish configuration in the lower right corner. Now you'll be at the login screen. This is called a graphical user interface because we can use our mouse to select and enter usernames, passwords. Here select sample user1. Type in the password you set during installation which is secret all lowercase. Click the sign in button. You 
will be greeted with a welcome wizard to verify your language is English then click next At the typing page verify English US is checked press next privacy page turn the slider to off for location services click next connect your online account click skip click start using Oracle Linux server if you wish you may watch these videos or click on these links at this point you'll want to take a screenshot of your installation you may use the snipping or sketch and snip tool depending on the version of Windows you have you will click new and you'll always draw a triangle around the entire Oracle Linux window once I release the mouse button the sketch uh, um, snipping tool will show the image you captured here you will save the image you will give it a name such as project 2-1 I will place mine in a separate location and I'll click Save now to submit the homework for this assignment go to canvas go back to your home page back in the week two click on your project you can choose a file or drag a file over the rocket ship here I'll click the rocket ship I'll click the folder that I saved my image in I'll click the image I'll click open some projects will require multiple images you would click the rocket ship again select the next image once all the files appear at the bottom of the screen you can hit submit assignment that is all for this video